April 17, 2018 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order. And we are pleased to have with us Mr. Rick Martin, our communications director, here with us to lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, please remain standing for our pledge to the flag. Good evening. Good evening. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity and blessing to gather here this evening before this Board of Commission meeting. We thank you for the opportunity to enjoy freedom to assemble. We thank you and pray for our leaders and elected officials to offer guidance and wisdom while making difficult and challenging decisions. We thank you for the members of the community who have sacrificed to get here after a hard day's work. We thank you for the opportunity of a bright future, not just for some, but for all citizens of Douglas County. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Martin, for being here and leading us in our invocation this evening and good evening again. And we are delighted that you have joined us and we appreciate your participation in local government. Public comment, clerk, do we have any public comment tonight? Yes, ma'am. We respect our citizens' rights to address their government in this meeting. However, as the chair, I intend to enforce our three-minute rule in order for this meeting to run effectively and efficiently. Once reached, you will be allowed to finish your sentence and the floor will be taken back by me. Please remember that your comments must, by rule, must be uh, limited uh, to things germane to this agenda. Please avoid campaigning or personal attacks against personnel or officials, uh, which should be ha handled in another forum other than a business meeting of this body. The first person that we have, I would call your name and ask you to come forth, and when you come forth, please state your address, your subject matter. And um, the first person is Ashley Grizzle, I hope I'm saying that right. Is it yes, ma'am. Oh, are. wow, I hit it Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. um, I am actually coming about the city of Villarica annexation of some land that abuts the Dog River Basin. Yes, um, it is a, or a, a, across the creek from our property. Uh, we have, I have um, 39 signatures of the immediate neighbors in that area that all of which are in opposition to allowing a high density, um, low cost product going in right there. Number one, because it affects the creek. We've seen already increase in um, turbulent, you know, runoff in the creek, and we're not crazy about seeing those kind of environmental changes. Uh, <clears throat> also, a lot of the uh, residents have seen trespassing, dumping, trash, that sort of nature. Villarica already has a surplus of that level of housing, and we're all about growth, but we'd like to see smart growth in our community. Yes. So I just wanted to express the dissent of myself and some of my neighbors, and I have their names here. I was unable to get their signatures before this evening. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would like those read for the record, or is that too, <laughs> I don't want to take up a bunch of your time. Okay. I appreciate it. Though. Thank you so much for hearing me. Okay. okay. Thanks. You can submit it to our clerk. Lisa Watson, oh, yeah, for the record, so yes. Thank you. Next, we have Linda Hickman. Please come forward. I live down the street from Ashley, and I, she speaks for me as well. I am opposed to this development going in in our area, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Next, we have, uh, and when you come forth, please give us your address, please, oh, when you come forth. If you could just state it for the record, I appreciate you. 9110 East Tyson Road. Yes, ma'am. Villa. Rick. Thank you. Yes. Next, we have Mr. James Hickman. Hi, and uh, thank you for the council's time tonight. Um, I just uh, was calling to speak regarding, oh, my address is 9110. East Tyson Road, Villarica, Georgia. And um, the reason I'm visiting the council on this night is for the same reason as my mom and sister to, uh, 
to speak of our neighbors and our opposition to the annexation of 34.75 acres at the corner of Pool Road and Tyson Road in, in uh, currently in unincorporated Douglas County. It's my understanding after talking with the planning department and officials with the WSA that they oppose this annexation. And it's my understanding from research of news articles and speaking with the planning department and, and news articles in the Times Georgian that uh, the city of Villa Rica's current sewer and water infrastructure is woefully inadequate to handle this additional load on the capacity. They can't manage their current infrastructure and um, can, you know, are currently bother, borrowing water from, Doug, from Carroll County and are in the works of negotiating an agreement to borrow water from Douglas County. <clears throat> and since the Dog River Basin is the primary source of drinking water for all of us, it seems um, you know, you know, hasty to try and approve a high density subdivision that could impact the drinking water for everyone. Um, further, it's come to my attention that the access to the proposed development through Pool Road is substandard, that the road does not meet the current Villa Rica streetscape requirements and width requirements. The, um, you know, and, and additionally, there's school, you know, concern as to the, the property values and the impact to the schools in the area. And for all those reasons and, and to protect, you know, and after speaking with all the citizens, both in Douglas County and in the city of Villarica, every single person I've spoken to is in opposition to this proposed development. So for those reasons, we'd like to ask that you guys continue to honor the established urban growth boundary um, as signed by Jay Collins, the former mayor of Villarica 11 years ago. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hickman. Uh, next we have Ms. Christy Ward. Okay, we'll move forward. All the wards? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we had uh, Cole, Cole Ward and Kevin Ward here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, thank you all so much for participating in county government, and we'll take this matter under advisement, okay? Presentations, we have one presentation tonight, and it is uh, Mr. Rich Boulain will be giving us a SPLOST update. It's got a screw. Yes. <laughs> Ride right on up. <laughs> Makes life a little easier. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Commissioners. Again, my name is Rich Bolay. I'm with Moreland Altabelli Associates, and I'm here to present the splash update for the end of March 2018. <clears throat> Moving forward, you can see again the $100 million program that we have. Uh, it's currently programmed. Uh, 17% is Parks and Rec in the green. You can see we've budgeted about $16.9 million towards projects. Fire EMS is 32% of the $100 million, $32 million. We've budgeted about 31.6 of that money. And then uh, transportation is 51%. Uh, and you can see we've only budgeted about 30.6 so far. We have large buckets of money with projects. And as we get budgets, uh, for those individual projects, we'll get those programmed in. And then the little sliver is the yellow. That's the program management expenses, 4.2 million over the course of the project. Moving forward, this is just shows our spend plan versus what we've actually spent to date. Uh, fire EMS, you can see it was slow start, but picked up through the winter. Same thing with transportation and then parks and rec. Uh, revenues. You can see at the bottom, February, our splash revenues came in at uh, $1.7 million. Again, our average that we had for the first year was 1.99, so we're a little, little under the established budget per month. Uh, that's just a bar chart showing. Uh, December was the best month we had, obviously, with the holiday shopping. Uh, but to date, we've collected $21.3 million over the first 11 months. Uh, we were expecting $21.9 million, so uh, we're about $60,000 per month under what we were expecting. That equates to about 3%. So we manage this every month. We take a look at this every month. And uh, again, uh, right now we're not recommending any drastic changes to the overall program, but uh, I do want to keep you abreast of what's going on with the revenues. Bond payments, we completed our first year uh, March 31st, and we made our two bond payments in October. We uh, made the first interest payment of 1.4 million, 
and then April 1st of this year, we just completed principal and interest to the tune of 8.5 million. So we met our bond obligations for the first year. April 1st did start splash year number two. So if you look at the second green bar chart going north and south on the, on the screen, you can see where that tops out, we're gonna owe $17.7 .7 million to the bonding company next year. So as we start collecting revenues for the month of April, again, we'll put those monies in escrow until we have enough money to meet our bond obligations. So uh, we'll start that April 1st, and I'll keep you informed uh, as we collect the money when we, get, we actually get enough money in our pocket that we can start putting that money towards the projects after we meet what we owe the bonding company. Okay, moving into the projects. First category is fire EMS. The first project in, on the list is the digital radio system. Uh, digital radio system was awarded to Motorola. They're actively pursuing the job. Right now, they're currently working on the site selections for the towers. The backup power requirements, uh, in case power goes out, we'll have backup generators at those sites, and then the towers themselves. So uh, that investigation and design work is ongoing. And as I told you yesterday, I will make arrangements to have Motorola and uh, Tusa to come in and do a presentation once a quarter to give you a good detailed uh, report on the digital radio system. That's, that's an 18 month duration we started in March, so just kicking that off. Ambulance procurement, uh, for splash year number two, we have two ambulances in the budget for uh, fire EMS, and we're gonna piggyback on the contract we did last year, and we got great prices from them, so uh, we're gonna put in another two ambulances with uh, the same company. So now that we're in splash year two, we'll get working on that. Fire trucks, the pumper truck, uh, talking to the chief, we, uh, the pumper truck is here. We've accepted it, we'll get it into service. So. Uh, that did come, that was up in Winder uh, for some punch list items, but it is here now on site. Uh, fire truck procurement, we've got another fire truck that we're gonna do again this year, so we'll get that out on the street for, uh, for procurement, and uh, that'll be part of Splash Year too. Ladder truck, the aerial truck, that was our $1.3 million ladder truck that we bought. Uh, that's in service as we speak. There's still about $100,000 of equipment that we need to purchase to outfit that truck. So uh, those purchases are ongoing. There's three vendors that we're working with to uh, procure that hardware. Station three renovations. Make sure I get the Station three renovations. We revised the construction plans. If you remember, that came in over budget. Uh, we value engineered some of the things out and changed some materials. We've also taken it upon ourselves to take a look at maybe doing some of the work with county forces so that we can lower the cost. But those plans. Uh, are in final review and we'll get those plans and specs out on the street for bid uh, and, and see what we can do to get the budget lower. So that's progressing. And the new si signage, uh, nine of the signs are in place. You'll see later on the agenda today, there's a change order for a 10th sign. So uh, <coughs> once we get that approval, we'll finish that up and get all the stations uh, with new signage, uh, identification signs. A couple of staff vehicles for 2018. Again, we'll get those procurements moving forward now that we're into splash year two. And that's it for fire EMS. Next up is transportation. Transportation, the resurfacing program for 2017 was complete last fall. We did have some punch lists, that's all done. Striping's done, the raised pavement markers are in. Uh, that project came in about 100 and $40,000 under budget, so we saved a little bit of money there. Uh, moving into 2018, we have the list of streets. They've been approved by the Transportation Committee. Uh, we'll be moving forward with that project to uh, get that out on the street for bid. This is the best time of year to go out on the street with uh, resurfacing projects. Everybody's trying to book their work for the year. So uh, original budget, $3 million, so uh, well within the confines of the splash program. Riverside Parkway streetlights, uh, project is ongoing. It's a little bit behind schedule, uh, drove through there. They've got lights and poles up to the Thornton Road side of Sweetwater Creek. So uh, that job is ongoing. We've had numerous discussions with Greystone Power about increasing the resources to uh, hurry that project up and get it done. Lee Road extensions. Uh, that's a planning study that's ongoing. There'll be a change order to increase the scope of that work. And uh, uh, 
Uh, that's all part of the economic development money, so we're waiting for that planning study to get complete so that we can identify some projects that we can do with the, uh, the pot of money for economic development. Also included in that is the Riverside Parkway Rock House Road traffic signal. Uh, that is nearing end of completion of construction. The signal heads are on top of the mast arms. Uh, last time I went through, the only thing we're waiting for is the application for power to get electricity out there that we can turn those signal heads on. They'll be in a flashing mode for about 30 days. We call that a burn-in cycle. Uh, let everybody aware that uh, the lights are coming, and then after the burn-in cycle, we'll get those permanently turned on. There's still a little bit of striping. The crosswalks, the last time I went through, they were laid out, but they were not final striped. So uh, uh, get the power out there and get the striping done and get that finished up. Moving on to intersections and operations. First intersection there is Stewart Mill Road at Reynolds Road. We do have an agreement with Jacobs Engineering to complete the design of that project. Uh, right now, uh, the contract is in Douglas County DOT. They're finalizing the contract for signature. As soon as that's done, we'll get that to, uh, to you in procurement so that we can get the contract executed and get Jacobs working on that project. Bright Star Road and John West, Southeast Engineering is the designer of that project. Uh, they're pursuing the work right now. The end of this month, we will have our preliminary plans, which are about a 15% level of effort. So we'll get to see what the layout, what their ideas are, what it looks like, and we'll get our first preliminary budget that goes along with that so that we have a good idea what that project will cost us. So we should have that in-house by the end of the month. Sweetwater Church, Doris Road, Paulding County did send over the electronic drawings yesterday afternoon. So we're taking a look at those and we will get those with the signal designer, the electrical engineer to design the signal for Douglas County so that we can get the, uh, the civil part done and the electrical part done. So that's moving forward and we did get the drawings yesterday. So. Uh, next up, Chapel Hill Road intersections. That's very running parallel with uh, the other project uh, Southeast is doing. Uh, we're expecting the preliminary plans for that by the end of the month with our first preliminary cost budget. If you remember, we increased the limits and it now goes from High Country Drive to uh, Sterling Point Drive. So uh, that'll, we increase the scope, that'll increase the budget. So, uh, but we are waiting for the delivery of that. Highway 5, Douglas Boulevard, and uh, Highway 92, Anawake Road. I was just talking to Miguel. They were hot topics on the Transportation Committee meeting today. So uh, we are putting a plan in place to get those moving forward. Okay, the three schools, uh, Lithia Springs Elementary, Chestnut Log Middle, and New Manchester High School. Uh, we put the design services back out on the street for bid. We've ruffled feathers, we've called everybody we know and we've had commitments that folks will bid that engineering work. So uh, we're expecting proposals this coming Friday afternoon. So uh, we eagerly await the response on that. Transportation procurement left over from last year. I think we've got two pickup trucks or one pickup truck for uh, Miguel. Two pickup trucks are on order. Uh, so as soon as they come in, we'll close out that procurement and then moving into 2018 uh, equipment procurement for transportation. Uh, we'll get with Miguel and. Uh, see what he wants to buy for uh, DOT for equipment. <clears throat> so those are moving forward. Parks and Recreation comes up next. Uh, first two project boundary waters concession stand, press box, bathroom. The plans are in final review. So uh, we do have final plans on that. And what next step would be to approve those final plans or make any changes to them. And then we'll put that on, on the street. We asked the architect to give us a, I call it an architectural board, just a picture of the build, uh, a schematic of the building and some of the color palettes. What's the color of the roof? What's the color of the block and that type of stuff so that we have a, a good idea what it's gonna look like before we go build it. So uh, they're gonna give us one of those. So we can take a look. With that Boundary Water soccer field lighting, these are the two projects that we married up, added the budgets together and we're building both projects with the, with the original budget. So, uh, and we have bids on the soccer field lighting. We get the, the press box done and then we'll put that out for construction, get that going this summer. Deer Lick Park tennis courts. 
Uh, that was another one when we first originally bid it. Uh, didn't get any bids. We put it back out on the street. We received two proposals. It is still with the evaluation committee. We do have a recommendation, but it's with the uh, evaluation committee. That'll be on your agenda next month in May, uh, recommending award to uh, the architect. Get that one into the design phase, get that one going. Multi-purpose rec center, that's the uh, Sutton architecture. Uh, that was approved last month. Uh, contracts are in the final stage of ex getting executed, signed, sealed, and delivered. As soon as we get those executed, we'll have a kickoff meeting and get the design going on the uh, rec center. Following that is the new senior center. Uh, we put that out on the street for architect engineering services. We had a great response. And right now, the award will probably also be, I think that's tonight, uh, later on in your agenda, where you'll see the recommendation for award for the architect engineering services on that. So uh, I don't want to steal Bill Peacock's thunder, so we'll uh, wait for him to bring that up. Uh, moving into parks, renovations. Uh, we have two, Bill Arp, Bill Arp and Fair Play Park. Uh, we've got the engineer designing the bathroom concession and press box at each location. Uh, they are preliminary plans, so we got about 15% level of design, so we're working through that. Uh, Lowson Associates designing the dugouts and the fencing, so we're combining that all that together to marry up to the budget to get as much work as done that we can for the budget that we have. Post Road Park, no real uh, update there. Those are the uh, score boxes. And then miscellaneous equipment for Parks and Rec. Uh, 2017, I think uh, Gary's got one pickup truck on back order, so as soon as that one comes in, we'll close out 2017. 2018, he's got a new budget there, and actually he's got some equipment that uh, on the agenda later today for award, so we're, we're uh, pursuing the new equipment for uh, Parks and Rec on 2018. And then last is our program management expenses. Uh, uh, you can see our original work order ended in December, but we, uh, I'd like to say we were efficient enough, we were able to carry that forward three extra months. So uh, we burned up the original work order at the end of March, and we have the new work order that actually started April 1st. So uh, good to go there. And uh, let's see, that's it, unless you have any questions. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Thank you so much for your delivery, Rick, Rich. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Th thank you, Madam Chair. I commit to my, my colleagues, I'll be brief d during this meeting of all my comments for, the, for all intents and purposes. Um, Rich, I have one thing regarding um, the SPLOS is dealing with the street lights. And it's something that we discussed yesterday um, during the work session. And as we know, that is a form to prepare for the meeting, the meeting before the meeting. So I'm gonna state for the record um, why the delay and what did we discover um, in inquiring as to why it's taking so long on the street lights on Riverside. Just the resources that, uh, I don't want to say Greystone Power, but their contract to put on the job, it just seemed they were building that project with two people. Every time we called up and said, hey, what's going on? We heard the flu, we heard the weather, we heard vacation, we heard all kinds of excuses. Uh, but the fact of the matter is it's just going slower than what we anticipated, what we expected. Uh, I know they said, oh, we did, they didn't realize it was a high priority. I uh, don't believe that. We've, we've expressed that, how important the project is. And I can't tell you how many times I've used your name in vain in discussing it with them. But uh, it's just, I've, I've heard every excuse in the book. I talked to Jeff Knowles today with Greystone. He said that they had had issues with uh, getting the fiber located out there as well. And, and I, I appreciate that and, and Director Peacock as well for looking into this. And it, it's one of those, and I, we understand weather. We understand, you know, stuff happens, right? I, I think two things. One, we had to ask. We had to ask. Um, I, I, my, my concern is when you have partners to who, and then they get into you know, commentary of, Feeling. We didn't feel or we didn't believe, and I'm, I'm going to quote what was shared yesterday, believe that this was a priority. You didn't have to use my name in vain. There hadn't been a meeting that I had not let up on this as being a priority. It was supposed to have been a quick, a quick win for the county out the gate, right? Where, where have we put that many lights at? Uh, when have we began to sort of transform a district like that? Um, how is that not a priority? 
Um, even the bill that comes off of that, that we have to pay for operations. I mean, you would think, where, where's the incentive? So who are they listening to to think that this, I mean, what, what were they looking at that this was not a priority? Uh, again, staff, I appreciate you guys looking into it. Rich, I appreciate it. Um, and, you know, again, we, we all are held accountable, right? Even our vendors, right? And I, I recognize that, and I, you please confirm if you know the truth, that we're not paying for this until service is rendered. Is that accurate? We have not paid any money to Greystone Power for those lights yet. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to yield. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you so much. Commissioner Guider? Yes. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, Ridge, uh, Fair Play Park. Mm -hmm. uh, go over wh where we are on Fair Play Park. Have we got the new light poles up because there was a danger with the the poles that were there. Fair Play Park, uh, like a preliminary plans. We've got the preliminary plans in house for review. Terry, you might. That's correct. Yeah. So. Have we done anything about the poles because uh, you know they were rotting? The, the I'd light have to poles. Check. I don't. I, I, off the top of my head, I can't say that. I haven't heard that before. So the poles are on the list. Um, they were further down on the list. They were closer to the bottom as far as the poles at Fair Play. Um, I'm going by memory. I'll have to pull this up. But uh, Well, my memory says that they were a danger because they were uh, old and rotting. Was that not Fair Play with the, the and? At one time, was there discussion about moving poles from um, the, um, what was the other part that we closed? We did move four poles earlier in the year. We moved the ones from Mount Carmel Park right. to Bill R. We did move those four poles. But you didn't move them to Fair Play? No, we okay. moved them to Bill R. Uh, yeah, Gary's not here, is he? No, okay. Um, anybody from Parks and Rec here? <laughs> mm. Uh, we need to look into that because yep. last I heard, those poles were dangerous because they were riding. So uh, we're going to be replacing the uh, concession stand, the dugouts, yep. the fencing. Fencing. Pretty well the whole park. Score boxes. <laughs> score okay. boxes. So as far as, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, yeah. Commissioner Goddard. And the score boxes, I was yeah. just adding that. So as far as what was approved by the commissioners on the, uh, once you get to item six in park Rec Parks and Recreation. So the first one is Bill Art Park, second one is Fair Play Park, which is, that consists of the fence, the dugouts, the concession stands, then Post Road Park, uh, Deer Lick Park, including the resurfacing of the, uh, the drive, and then, so one, two, three, so the fifth one would be Fair Play Park, replacing the lights. Okay, uh, maybe we need to talk about this uh, offline somewhere. <laughs> but uh, it's my understanding those poles were dangerous because they were so old. Yeah. I yield back. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Guider. I believe, okay. Commissioner, are oh, you gonna pass? <clears throat> Any other comment from the Board of Commissioners? Um, discussion? No, you okay? No, no, no. He, okay. He, he well, thank you, thank you so yeah. much, uh, Mr. Bolain. Yes, ma'am. Board of Commissioners, you have the minutes of the Commission meeting of April 3rd, 2018, and the work session and the executive session minutes of April 2nd, 2018. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand approved as presented. Proclamations. We have one proclamation tonight on the agenda. Tab number four proclaiming the month of April 2018 as Boys and Girls Club Month in Douglas County. And we have Kia Hartman here, club member, and she is the State Youth of the Year. Uh, it's Hartman. actually Kai Hartman. <laughs> yeah. oh, Kaya, I ruined it. I ruined Kai. It. Kaya. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, but, um, Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Douglas County Board of Commissioners, and I'm here to read the proclamation for Boys and Girls Club Month. 
Whereas the young people of Douglas County are tomorrow's leaders, and whereas many young people need professional youth services to help them achieve their full potential, and whereas the Douglas County Boys and Girls Club serves more than 200 young people annually, and whereas Boys and Girls Clubs instill young people with the self-confidence to believe they can succeed at anything they put their mind to and stand at the forefront of efforts in the areas of academic success, healthy lifestyles, and leadership. And whereas Boys and Girls Club organizations in Georgia help ensure young people have a safe, supportive place to spend their time and will provide them with quality youth development programs. And now, therefore, the Douglas County Boy Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims the month of April 2018 as Boys and Girls Club Month in Douglas County, Georgia. Furthermore, we encourage all citizens to join us in recognizing and commending Boys and Girls Clubs in Georgia for providing the young people of our communities with comprehensive and effective youth development services. So proclaim this 17th day of April, 2018. And um, I would just like to say thank you guys for supporting the Boys and Girls Clubs and changing and helping the lives of the children that need us most in our community. Thank you. You are so welcome and we really appreciate that and we, are, we really appreciate what the Boys and Girls Club represent here in Douglas County and, and all of your hard work. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have heard this proclamation. Um, do we have a motion to approve? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a mo motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. You're prepared to Are we cast your votes. I'm here? sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant to say, prepare to cast your votes, Board of Commissioners, if you're in favor. Technology. I'm a little spoiled. Technology has moved on. They'll count me in, but I've lost the screen. <clears throat> you lost the screen. Mm -hmm. All right. The motion carries. Thank you so much, would you please? Uh, we would like to take a photograph with you. So if we have representatives from the Boys, Boys and Girls Clubs, could you please come Agenda forward? Ball. And we'll take a photograph. We'll, we will come down. The Board of Commissioners will come down. So if you could just stand in front of the casing here. Thank you again, um, Boys and Girls Club. Next, we have a business item, tab number five, and it's authorized to award a contract to Yellowstone Landscape Southeast LLC for the fiscal year 2018 countywide shoulder maintenance for Douglas County at a total cost of $307,624, which includes Vertical mowing and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final review. Board of Commissioners, you have heard this item. Do we have a motion to approve? So, mo so move. Okay, we have a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion regarding this item? 
We have a motion and a second. All yes. In, okay. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Um, is um, Director Valentin here? Valentin. Yes. Yes, he is. Come on down. And I, I do want to make, thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to put some context on this, that uh, this was the topic that was brought before the Transportation Committee today in real time, and so uh, the topic warrants a, a broader discussion with the full Board of Commissioners. Um, a recommendation was sent forth from the committee in which we signed unanimously, but start there and, and give the background on, on the considerations, uh, Director Valentin. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner. Uh, we had pretty extensive discussion in, at the Transportation Committee about the, uh, the fact that uh, this year's contract is actually a little less robust than last year. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we also will be uh, allocating some staff uh, that was provided approved by the board to be able to go in uh, in between mowing cycles uh, as needed and address areas that may need more frequent attention than uh, the overall uh, program would provide for. So uh, our expectation is that with three cycles of mowing, perhaps every couple of months would be when that contract uh, would be uh, taking place, where, where the mowing cycle would be taking place. And uh, although they are mowing approximately 260 miles of roads under this contract. Uh, we currently mow close to 300 miles uh, with it in-house forces as well. So uh, in addition to that, we would be utilizing some of the uh, in-house staff to address issues as they come up. Okay. And I'm gonna make a statement now. I'll yield to any of my colleagues who want to weigh in. This is a topic that um, the, the Board of Commissioners in 2017 had had um, both internally and, and perhaps through um, community input. In other words, you, you've got a SPLOS, you're doing a great job, but can you, can you mow the grass? Can you pick up? And thus we set out to sort of, uh, we awarded a contract probably this time last year. Um, it did not uh, meet expectations of the public. And I think all the Board of Commissioners um, landed on the same answer for different reasons, but all agreed that we were underwhelmed by the performance of um, said contractor. Uh, contractor, The contract was recalibrated. Uh, we added more money to it, almost doubled it, to try to get a better yield. We recognized um, weather, we recognized those things that were prohibited, but still um, the strategy was wrong. It was inerrant. This is BM coming into um, duly noted. Um, so, Coming full circle, and this is important from a transparency perspective, in the Transportation Committee, uh, there were three, how many um, bids were there? Three or, bids. Three bid responders. Uh, and uh, can you just go over the details of that and how we land on this? That's important to, to make sure that everybody understands uh, what happened. Yes, we had uh, three proposals. There was uh, one by the existing, or the the contractor who had the contract last year, NGL Erosion Control Group, and a bid by Yellowstone Landscape Southeast and Southeast Mowing LLC. The uh, low bid was at uh, $256,315. The second low bidder was at $306,326.80, and that was Southeast Mowing. The, uh, the second low bidder, however, is uh, an outfit out of uh, operating out of Tennessee, does not have local uh, uh, place of operation. And uh, then the uh, third low bidder was a little over $1,000 uh, above that one. Yellowstone Landscape uh, Southeast LLC is an outfit operating out of Smyrna. And so uh, essentially the discussion was uh, along the lines of because of the uh, uh, performance issues that were experienced last year with, uh, uh, with the existing contractor, the prior contractor, 
uh, we would then uh, consider going to the second low bidder, uh, but because that was uh, an, uh, a contractor that the county's not familiar with, uh, that does not normally operate, uh, certainly in this county or this area, and that, uh, to our knowledge, does not have any facilities in the state, uh, that we would not risk perhaps a repeat of the performance of last year and therefore that left uh, uh, the third bidder, which was again a little over $1,000 above the second low bidder. And that one is a local uh, outfit that uh, we could reach out to if there's any performance issues, any uh, need for them to come back and <coughs> remedy some deficiencies that we may uh, observe. Uh, so that's the recommendation that uh, uh, that was the consensus of the committee. Okay. And I'll, I'll close with that. And this is one of those where, um, again, the dollar amount is not that much, but it, it's still material enough. Um, sometimes it's about the optics of performance. And this is, this is not like an internal or we're advocating for a certain vendor or something like that. The, the public pretty much weighed in and says that, you know, what you're doing, um, we, we're just not seeing our tax dollars being used. Uh, Director Valentin, you brought up a comment that says that based on what we currently uh, are doing, it wasn't sufficient. We asked you point blank, well, what are your assessment, your professional opinion, and we appreciated that. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell had mentioned in times past last year about we perhaps are going the wrong way. In other words, to your words, Director Valentin, not enough frequency. You can't get there from here, and then your dollar amount went less, we're going the wrong way. So I'm speaking on behalf of the Transportation Committee. We thought that that was that, that low bid was just, no, we're going the wrong way. And, and, and again, we had questions about that. We went to the number two. Our, our, our express position internally was, um, especially regarding um, operations, is local, right? In other words, surely there has to be somebody in this county, at least the state, that can cut grass. Surely we shouldn't have to go outside the state to do that. And then the third position, of course, was uh, the person that was not that too far off. That being said, I mean, I, we're leaning toward almost just scrapping it and like, okay, just start over it, or could our staff do it in-house? Um, based on direct um, commentary from our, our director, uh, Valentin, as well as our county administrator, uh, it would maybe perhaps both, based on timing of where we are right now in the cycle of taking care of our, our lawn matters, um, and, and two, just for the fact that we had put money into equipment and personnel to sort of move this forward. That being said, I'm going to yield my commentary because, um, again, I did sign the recommendation to come forth, but I, I really want to hear my peers' opinion on this uh, because I'm not quite settled at my board commissioner level um, how I uh, feel about this moment. I yield. Okay, any other questions or comments from board of commissioners? We have a motion. Well, I, commissioner I just, Mitchell? Yes, I, I'll just make a, a, a slight comment, and I think um, I, I'll – take the recommendation from uh, the committee in reference to this item. However, I think there was a couple other factors to include one weather. I mean, we had a lot more rain, you know, in past. Uh, not to say this time around, will we get more rain? Do we need more mowing? <laughs> so this is going to be an interesting concept. And I think the public stated and well stated that what we did wasn't enough. Now. The question is, what we're now proposing, I'm hoping that uh, it, it appears on, on the surface, on paper, that this might work, but we won't know it until we kind of get into the swing of uh, the mows and the moors and, and all that kind of good stuff. So with that, I mean, it's a lot to kind of to get this done, but I think I can support it because of the need and see kind of what we're going to end up at. So I guess we'll wait till the data come through and we'll see kind of what this looks like at the end of the day. But um, it's going to be um, um, definitely monitored <laughs> to reassure from my perspective, as Vice Chair stated, from the district level commissioners, from where I sit, I, I, I got to see it come, come forth versus what we saw last year. So I'll yield. Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Mulcair? Yes. Uh, 
first of all, uh, I'll speak for myself. I was, uh, I was thoroughly dissatisfied uh, with the quality of work uh, last year. Uh, some places it looked like uh, goats had grazed or something here and there. And, you know, <laughs> don't mean to be funny, it just comes naturally. And um, so we knew that we had to do something different as mm -hmm. opposed to what we'd done last year. Now, Director Valentin brought up a, an interesting idea, and I hope, and we, we discussed it with, with Director Valentin about uh, devising a plan how, number one, number one, we, we customize our cutting system, and that goes to say in areas that are more polished and more residential and commercial and manicured and so forth and so on, that maybe we need to cut grass and right away in those areas more frequently than three times or four times a year. And, uh, and perhaps in more rural areas where, where there, there are very, very few houses, there's uh, very little uh, manicured lawns, there's a lot of woods and that, and that sort of thing, uh, perhaps we don't cut as often. So what I'm talking about is perhaps cu customizing our, our cutting uh, protocol. That's not to shortchange anybody, it's just, it's just to recognize the difference of the different character areas that, that we live in. So that's something that uh, Director Valentin is, is going to look at. The other thing we've talked about is, is over time or coming up with a transition plan, because this, you know, paying a contractor is not cheap either. And, and perhaps over a period of time, we can bring more and more of this work uh, into the county. We can control the deployment. Mm -hmm. We can uh, deploy the, uh, the schedule, uh, mm -hmm. uh, manage the schedule, uh, and manage resources to uh, a better end product as opposed to somebody uh, um, you know, out, out of county. So I think that's the direction we'll have to look at uh, over a period of time. Uh, for now, uh, you know, for this year, I think this is the best option. Uh, I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Director Valentin. Do you have any other? Well, Commissioner I, Guy, I just comment. make uh, a, a short comment. Um, whoever did it year before last did a wonderful job, mm -hmm. but last year was awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, we're going from four cuts or five cuts down to three in this. Action. Yes. yes, with action, but and we have originally the budget cut. had what five cuts? Was it five cuts? It, it was. We had five cuts in there, and it was cut to three. It was cut to three. Okay. Mm -hmm. With and at the commission. Of course, the delivery. price was cut too because right. of that. And then he's utilizing another team. Could you talk about the additional staff that you have employed? Yes, as, as part of the the budget uh, request, the board did approve staff to be able to do additional mowing. Now, again, let me uh, be clear. We already are doing more mowing in-house than is included under this contract. So it would be in addition to all that we're doing already. Mm -hmm. uh, recognizing that potentially there are areas that need more frequent mowing or perhaps a different uh, type of mowing, a more uh, manicured look, not necessarily like a golf course, but not uh, just what a bush hog would do. So uh, the concept was, and the plan is, to be able to utilize uh, our in-house crew, the, the crew that was approved, uh, with the equipment to be able to step in and go to those areas that need uh, more frequent mowing and, and attention uh, when issues come up, uh, that would be a non-routine mowing cycle, if you would, uh, but it was an attempt at uh, addressing uh, the, the fiscal issue uh, with the limitations that, that it entails and be able to address the needs. That, uh, How often uh, does the state cut? The state has, has gone to cutting four times a year but for several years, they were cutting twice a year. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we, we approved, I believe we approved you additional staff. Is this the crew that's going to be cutting? Yes. Because I was under the impression they were also going to be fixing the, the gullies on the side they, of the they road, are. too. <laughs> they are. And, I, and, and that was part of, part of the, uh, 
uh, what I was pointing out, that this additional crew would be able to step in and assist with the mowing, but that would not be their the only, the only the duty. Day. They have okay. other And they've other done reasons. a wonderful job on a, a, a couple of the roads, but post-road there's still a lot of drop-offs, dangerous drop -offs drop off so but uh, and I appreciate the, the ones you have done on Cowan Mill and, and Mason Creek especially <clears throat> but uh, I just wondered um, so the the whole question is whether or not three is gonna cut it <laughs> so to speak mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we will see right. and it depends a lot on the weather right really yes so uh, and when does the first cut does it happen till about June, July? No, the the first cut actually happened in May. If the if the it's already uh, been cut. I don't know. In it's May. Go, oh, it's going to be going cut to be in May. Okay. Happen in May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will start in May and then every couple of months after that. Okay. All right. I yield back. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Director Valentine, sure. for taking the time to speak with us. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, please cast your votes. Okay, thank you so much, Clerk. The votes are, we have a unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Next, we have on our business item, which is tab number six, approval of the contract with um, Milton Kidd to serve as the elections supervisor and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Board of Commissioners, you've heard this uh, proposal which is the approval of this contract for Mr. Milton Kidd to serve as our election. Sure. Can I point out one thing on this? Yes. Uh, it goes into effect, it would go into effect if approved in May because it would line up with the current supervisor of elections retirement. Mm -hmm. But I want to point out on the current house, well, the house bill that describes this job, it is a four year appointment. Okay. Subject to removal in the same manner as registrars are removed. So this is really going to be a four year contract. That's in the, the House bill. Y'all remember that the Board of Elections and Registration, mm -hmm. the House bill was changed to that dealt with the section three on the appointment of members of the Board of Elections and Registration. Okay. It did not affect the supervisor of elections as to the length of their appointment. So I do want to point out this is a four year will be a four-year deal by virtue of the House bill that is pending. We've got a couple minor changes we'll make next week, but it really won't go into effect until May. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Board of Commissioners, again, uh, do we have a motion to approve this contract with Milton Kidd to serve as the election supervisor effective May 11th uh, and for, for this four-year appointment? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just one. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. And, and to, for legal. So this four year, are we gonna line up with December as the contracts we do, or is it gonna line up uh, as of May 11th, if I'm hearing the dates correctly? I, I, I had it pulled up, but I don't have it now. But uh, okay. we debated that issue, but the problem in going into more than four years mm -hmm. or less than four years would violate the current local legislation regarding the, the uh, seat so it will be exactly four years so four years from may 11th or 12th land okay. and, and that's how i just yeah. wanted to be cl clarified yeah so 2022 we wanted to end it december 31st but it would violate the spirit of the, the legislation understood and if we did it four and a half years right. it would then exceed we'll the right. authority and legislation i understand so. I understand. All right. We'll track it though, so y'all know. Understood. So that'll just be one little odd contract that we'll have because I think we've been trying to line everything up at a physical year of December, the end of December. So. That's correct. Okay. All right. I, I yield back. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Commissioners, please cast your votes. have a unanimous vote uh, and the motion carries tab number seven 
approval of the county entering into an agreement with the city of Douglasville for the purchase of the old jail, ex excluding the 911 building and tower for the sum of $850,000 as is, together with the county reserving a right of ref a first refusal with respect to the disposition of the bridge over Church Street should the county, uh, should the city dispose of same or sell same and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final review. Board of Commissioners, you heard um, this uh, proposal, uh, which is the approval of the county entering into an agreement with the city of Douglasville for the purchase of the old jail. So do moved. we have a motion? I'm sorry. Do we, I'm sorry. Okay, do we have so a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. Commissioner Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah. Uh, this one, um, I'm, I'm encouraged that um, the, the commissioners who were involved in sort of having conversations to, to sort of frame this offering and getting us to a, a happy median and even the conditions that are associated with it. But this is something that um, I'm, I'm personally pleased with to say that uh, the, the county and city, though we do collaborate, um, there, we, we too have our own character areas. And I really believe that our, um, our involvement in downtown should be limited, all right? That's our, 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 our county seat, right? It, it, they've got their own unique vision. And that key asset was something that I said from, from, from early on when we built the original jail, sell it. Get out of the city's way. Why are we down there trying to, you know, be a partner in something where we're the heavyweight when we had this big, huge asset? So I'm, I'm delighted. Um, I've always taken that position, either let Medea blow it up or at least sell it. And I'm glad that we're out of the downtown jail business. I yield. Okay, any other comment from the Board of Commissioners? I'll just, Commissioner Mitchell? I'll just, you know, just add to what Vice Chair stated, and, and, and I'm actually proud and glad that we've actually got to this particular resolution with uh, Mayor Robinson and the, and the council and actually getting to this point of actually doing what we're doing. Because I think we've definitely done some great things of collaboratively effort, uh, uh, collaborative efforts of trying to uh, show not only the general public but us as a board how well we work together in, in getting something as of this magnitude done. So I commend the, the mayor and council to include um, this board on moving forward with this particular setting and, you know, just instrumental in pulling it off. And I think uh, great job and a job well done. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a... Commissioner Guider. Just, just no, one no little comment. Um, okay. uh, we were able to see the rendition of what is going to be placed where the uh, old jail is today. And um, it, there's going to be a lot of green space. There's going to be an outdoor like amphitheater. And um, it's going to be very, very nice because we, we can all say, although we love the uh, the filming industry coming in and using the jail to film all these movies and everything, it is an eyesore. So uh, I think I, I look forward to uh, the green space and it, the uh, new use of the property. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Please cast your votes. I'm getting ready here. Madam Chair, just while y'all are casting votes, I want to point out for purposes of the record, the reason why we said what we did in the agenda item is so that we could review the plat of survey, which was not attached, right. as well as the final language, so we know what the commission has authorized us to do with that. So we're, we're tracking down the final plat. Mm -hmm. We don't have it. Okay. Thank you so much, County Attorney. All right. We're still waiting on the... Done. It went away. Yes. Well, motion approved. Um, it was a. I'm assuming a unanimous, a uni, uh, unanimous vote. Thank you. I didn't see it. All right. We'll move on to tab number eight. 
approval of the county's objection to the proposed annexation by Villarica outside uh, its present boundaries and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, you have heard this um, and um, putting this before you. Do you approve? So the county's that, objection to the proposed annexation. Would you like any background at all, Madam Chair? Yes. I, I just <laughs> want to make sure sort of the record is set up for y'all to consider you. this. Uh, so at some point in time, we received notice of this annexation, which I think there's another notice that has been sent since then. Because the statutory guidance is very direct as far as the days on Friday, we sent over the objection based on a number of factors, and I can read those into record if need need to. Mm -hmm. uh, and the chair was not available, and we did not have a meeting, so we had the vice chair at our request. And I just want to make sure the record's clear that the vice chair signed the letter as directed, by, prepared by legal, along with the development staff, mainly Ron. Um, and so we tracked down the vice chair because it had to go out by certified mail to ensure delivery timely as well as it was being hand delivered. What's, bef what's before you on this annexation essentially boils down to a few things. One, we currently have a 2007 agreement with the city of Villarica which establishes their boundaries and they agree to be bound by that and not annex into the unincorporated Douglas County until I think the year 2036. Those matters are reviewed during every 10 years during the service delivery strategy negotiations. And there was not a request for increasing their uh, boundaries at the last SDS, which is currently in play. Mm -hmm. That's one basis is the contractual claim. There are several others, but I wanted to point out that there is a contractual bar to this happening, along with concerns by the Water and Sewer Authority staff concerning the uh, basin, the density change, because there's a density change between our zoning and their zoning, among other factors. But I wanted to just make sure y'all knew the basis for us taking action because the days were going to run out for us to object before y'all had a meeting. Mm -hmm. You're essentially confirming actions that have already occurred and those will occur going forward based on the new notice because since that notice was sent, I think a new notice, I don't know if Ron's, Ron's here, a new notice came in that changes the date, so we'll send out another objection based on those matters and others contained in our letter signed by the vice chairman at, at our request. Thank you so much, County Attorney. With that being said, uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the approval of the county's objection to the proposed annexation by Villarica? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Commissioner? Yeah, I just, I, it, 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 this is important from a process perspective, and this is something I'm, uh, I thank um, the county um, attorney for bringing it up. Um, as the vice chairman, I was asked uh, by staff to sign something that um, normally the vice chairman does not sign on behalf of the chair, right, and especially on something of a magnitude such as this. But because of the timing of this, it was one of those that only through the confirmation of our legal department would I even consider such a thing. Uh, it was important to be transparent, that no one can cry foul or process, and we didn't understand that. Um, it, it's not necessary um, but to make those conclusions, but it was important to say this is a rare case. Um, this happened and out of honor and respect for the office, and, and that this is not of an abuse of power or a workaround or any of that. So, Madam Chair, I just wanted to make sure we had that for the record. I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. We have a motion and a second. Uh, please prepare to cast your votes. Both votes have been cast, Just waiting on the results. We have a unanimous uh, vote to object this proposed annexation. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you, Board of Commissioners. Tab number nine, approval of the contract with Beasley, Allen, and Sherrod and Bernard PC to represent Douglas County in connection with the opioid crisis and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve a contract with Beasley, Allen, and Sherrod, and Bernard, PC, to represent Douglas County in connection with the opioid crisis? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Commissioner Mulk here. I would like the, uh, our, our attorney, yes, right. 
uh, Ken Bernard to explain the relationship uh, to Beasley and Allen uh, in this uh, regard, in this partnership, I'll call it, uh, and also in relationship to the county with his present employment. Would you clarify sure. that? Sure. Uh, this is extraordinary work outside the scope of what we normally do as far as just being a general counsel, a county attorney to the county. Throughout the state of Georgia, uh, firms from other places, right now I think there's at least two or three different pockets. One was a firm from New York, I recall, has engaged with some counties to file suit and has filed suit. Typically, those cases are handled, depending upon the circumstances, on a contingency fee basis where the expenses are advanced by the firms or the teams involved and the recovery is a contingency fee if there is an actual recovery. In order to be transparent with everybody, we are involved in this with BZ Allen as a team. In fact, we're presenting at the ACCG conference to all the lawyers in the state at the end of this month and have spoken with ACCG and other counties concerning uh, potential litigation. BZ Allen's out of Montgomery uh, and Atlanta, and they are, in fact, right now representing the state of Alabama and counties in Georgia and uh, Alabama. Their focus is the southeast, although they're a national firm. They've been one of the leaders in the BP litigation. The, uh, the list can go on, but I won't go through that. But they have the weight to be able to help fund the investigation of this. Uh, essentially, what the county is doing is hiring two firms as a team to investigate whether there is a case for local government here to recover any proceeds for past transgressions as it, as it affects the taxpayers for opioids and the future treatment of people that are addicted to opioids as a result of acts by others, including Big Pharma, uh, the distribution uh, chain where these have been distributed. Uh, as an example, I think I said, have told folks before, uh, the pharmaceuticals make the pills, they put out literature regarding uh, what its intended use and consequences are. They're distributed by usually three or four, and I think three primarily big manufacturing, uh, excuse me, three distributors. Those distributors have federal and state requirements as to identify and quantify shipments of narcotics and controlled substances. And it is alleged, among other things, that they have not followed those guidelines in an effort to thwart uh, the visibility to others where uh, some communities have received m numerous and numerous opioid prescriptions and the population doesn't support the need for the prescriptions that have been, readed, uh, have been given. I think we saw uh, during a discussion, Douglas County is eighth in the state of Georgia out of 159 counties in opioid re related matters. It's not good uh, here and other places and our first goal was to investigate. We, uh, I should say, going back, we've met with the sheriff, we've met with EMS. Uh, we will go through and see if we can quantify what the actual cost is to Douglas County, what the loss is, and how to address it, and at some point in the future, determine whether or not to file suit. The, the point that we're at right now with respect to this is you've got one group out of New York that has filed suit on behalf of some counties. You've got another group out of Northeast Georgia to try to file a class action on behalf of all counties, which we will opt out of so we can get our own remedy. Uh, Beasley brings a national presence because they'll, if there is multi-district litigation where uh, these matters are consolidated, uh, they have a strong track record of usually sitting on those panels, which might affect the result for, for Douglas County. But this is essentially approving our relationship on this litigation it's no cost to the county unless there's a recovery. Um, I hope that summarizes what was asked. I'm not sure. Commissioner Mocha, get it off. Uh, yeah, let me summarize. Uh, th th this is essentially a separate contract with you and your legal partners to seek remedies for the, for the ramifications of uh, opioid uh, crisis here. And so th there's, there's a stone wall between your position as county attorney and your contract as county attorney and this initiative with uh, uh, another legal firm. That's correct. To seek remedies. I yield back. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I think so. From the Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Please, ca please cast your votes.
here. They are. We have a unanimous vote again, and uh, the motion carries. Next, we have the consent agenda. We will move the consent agenda. We have 10 items tonight, and all these items are subject to final legal review. Tab number 10, ten revisit 2018 general fund recommended budget improvement requests, which are the BRRs, and approve and amend the 2018 budget. Tab number 11, authorization to accept a Violence Against Women Act, VAWA, competitive grant from Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, Council CJCC, create a position for a domestic violence investigator and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 12, authorization to renew the contract with COT Systems Incorporated for services provided for the clerk of Superior Court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 13, authorization to accept funds from the technology fund in the amount of $1,459.06 to purchase a laptop top for Judge Brian Fortner to utilize for state court accountability court operations. Tab number 14, approve updated fund balance policy to include excess fund balance that is committed for capital outlay. Tab number 15, approval to accept the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee to provide the Fire Department with an additional eight positions for manpower on ladder trucks and engines for Station 1 in the Three Springs and Station uh, 10 downtown to help decrease overtime costs and amend the budget. Tab number 16, approval to accept the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee for the purchase of an additional logo sign for the cost of $1,000 for the rear entrance of the fire station two in Winston with splashed funds. Tab number 17, authorization to award a contract to Carter Watkins Associates for professional architectural services related to the construction of the new senior center in Lithia Springs and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 18, authorization to use splashed funds to purchase two mowers for the Parks Maintenance Division and a pickup truck for the Recreation Division at a total cost of $43,283 as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Tab number 19, authorization to accept the ACCG Group Health Benefits Program Health Promotion and Wellbeing Grant in the amount of $2,500 and authorize the Chairman to sign our related documents and amend the budget. That concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So, so moved. moved. Second. <laughs> we have a motion. Do we have a second? So we have second. A we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any of the items of the consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I'll be quick. Just, just a couple of them. Um, um, Director Hallman. Number 14. Long term. Excess funds. Yes. Give a little background on that, please, and sure. bring us forward. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, as we discussed yesterday, um, we had um, we had hired our municipal advisors last year to um, help us with our SPLOS uh, bond issuance. Um, and when we went and met with the rating agencies, uh, they looked at all of our policies and uh, was. Um, <coughs> approved them or, or was glad to see the policies that we had in place. Uh, but one um, uh, point of improvement that they wanted to see um, was within our fund balance policy, they wanted to be able to uh, see something written in there that when we meet a certain threshold of our fund balance and we have excess fund balance above whatever threshold we we want to set it at, that we actually have a plan of how we're going to spend that money or set aside money for capital outlay. It's been Douglas County's past to fund majority, maybe not all, but the majority of capital outlay through SPLOST. Uh, so this policy allows us to, um, every year if we meet or exceed a certain percentage of our uh, fund balance that we set aside a percentage of a percentage, and I'll I have a, actually two slides that um, I have shown up there that will kind of read what is being recommended to be added to our excess fund balance policy. Um, and I'll read it and then the next slide will be the uh, example. The excess fund balance is in order for the county to take steps to fund and build reserves for capital outlay outside of SPLOS capital outlay, 
funding from the general fund should be set aside. Therefore, when the county's general funds unassigned fund balance exceeds 15% of expenditures, 25% of the excess funds are to be placed in the committed fund balance for future capital outlay. Also, up to 50% of this committed balance can be used on a single capital outlay or project unless otherwise approved by the Board of Commissioners. As previously mentioned in this policy, committed fund balance is the portion of a fund balance that includes amounts that can only be used for specific purposes pursuant to constraints imposed by formal action of the Board of Commissioners and remain binding unless removed in the same. And so since this was a, we have a percentage of fund balance that's a minimum and then we're saying, you know, once we reach another percentage, then we're going to take a percentage of that. I thought that I would kind of give an example so that it would make uh, clearer sense than just the paragraph. Just for rounding purposes, our budget's usually around 90 million, but just for easy math, I said, okay, if our general fund expenditures are 100 million, our 10% minimum fund balance policy that we currently have would mean that we would have an unassigned fund balance of $10 million. 15% uh, of the fund balance, of course, would be f uh, of unassigned would be 15 million. So based on that scenario, let's say year one, we had our unassigned fund balance of $20 million. The amount in excess of the 15% of fund balance would be 5 million because we would have, um, a tw uh, I'm sorry, we would have um, 15 million or we'd have 20 million unassigned and we would be 15 million would be the 15%. So we would have a 5 million excess. What we're saying is of that 5 million, we would take 25% of that, which would be 1,250,000 and commit that in the general fund as a committed fund balance for capital outlay. Um, and that money would be placed in there and it would only be at the discretion of the board at a, at a formal vote to move that money to apply for projects or whatever, what other, other projects or funding they would want to see. In year two, let's say the fund balance, the unassigned fund balance went to 21 million. The amount in excess of the 15% would be 6 million. So 25% of the excess is committed to fund balance. So we would add an additional $250,000 to the 1.250 that we had already put in there prior year. So we would have a total of $1.5 million in our committed fund balance, specifically for capital outlay in year two. So um, we feel like that you know, it's been just over a year since we went to the rating agency um, and they uh, offered some suggestions on an improvement. So we feel like this would be a good way to start that progress and um, it's something that would always be brought before y'all for a formal vote, whether it be individually or whether it be with the adoption of the budget. Thank you for that comment. I'll make my comments and yield out. Um, again, having the, the privilege to go and, and, and present to Wall Street, um, you know, at the end of the day, it was stated by both ratings agencies that we, we've got a good, solid financial position but there's room for improvement. And that's what I heard. In other words, yeah, you've got a policy on the bottom side, 10%, sounds good. And, it, and what they looked at was, okay, what happens when life is good for you guys and your outlook looks bright? How are you gonna handle that money? Are you gonna act like some new government and just go out spending? Or do you have discipline? Do you have real policy? Or is it emotionally, politically charged when you make spending, right? So the question becomes, had we had this policy in place, would we have made the same decision on the animal shelter, right? In, in other words, using cash. And how do we use cash? And was that part of our long-term capital plan? Um, and so having a policy in place is just a foundation to move toward a plan. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the plan and then I'm gonna yield back. How, because you have a policy, what's next? Yeah, the next step would be working with departments, county administrator, as well as our municipal advisors, reaching out to those departments, getting them to submit maybe a five-year or 10-year window of what their capital needs would be so that we would have an idea of what the needs are, what the wants are, so that when we have this extra money that we can start having a plan that we can apply those funds to instead of just doing it on an ad hoc basis from year to year. Thank you for that. Um, I, again, one of the 
one of the roles that the commissioners are responsible for is obviously managing money, which we always hear about, you know, managing roads, but also to set policy. We are a legislative body when we're assembled like this. And so from time to time, we got to weigh in and put real policy in place. And so I thank um, Director Hall and Mr. for working on this and with our new advisors, but uh, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other questions or concerns from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Guida. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Um, I would just like to say I appreciate uh, the chairman um, listening to my concerns about overruns in the budget yesterday and uh, removing one of the BIRs. Um, uh, concerning the fund balance and everything, you know, uh, several years ago, we, we passed a resolution to put $500 into the capital transportation fund. That didn't happen this year. So what's to prevent us from uh, passing this resolution here? Well, it's not a resolution. We're voting on it, a policy, and then not adhering to it. <coughs> well, when the with the capital transportation fund it was an annual it wasn't a every year it was an annual, it was not an every year allotment we didn't violate any policy i think what it was i believe it was i uh, i believe the resolution was that we would set aside five hundred dollars i mean five hundred thousand dollars every year to put in the capital transportation fund is that not I'm not maybe aware of that. Maybe my memory is wrong. I'm I sorry. think maybe the first year, I think maybe that's, we made our first contribution above and beyond a, a specific project to have as discretionary funds, but I don't think when that fund was created that we made the commitment or the board made the commitment to have an annual funding. It was on an well, as-needed basis. Was it that basis. part of uh, the $500,000 that was used in balancing the budget this year? I, there was that 500 and then 500 taken out of the capital transportation fund. I just want us, right. if we pass these policies, mm -hmm. I would like to see us follow them. That's mm -hmm. the only thing, I, I, that's the main thing I'm trying to get, that uh, if we want to establish a, a, a policy, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But let's adhere to it. So, yes. Yes, I, I agree. Saying? Yes, Okay. And I, <clears throat> then in, um, on item number 15, the approval of the um, the additional staffing of the eight uh, EMS and, and uh, firemen for the uh, ladder trucks. Um, the reason we're having to do this is through m many, many years, not just this year, but many, many years, the uh, fire chief would ask for additional staffing and that would be cut because of budget process and, and everything. And so we've gotten a deficit. So we're, we're trying to uh, fill in that deficit a little bit at a time. We can't do it all in one year, but we're trying to uh, bring that uh, staffing up to where it should be uh, in accordance to our population and the number of uh, stations that we have. And then uh, the last one is about the, um, the um, using the splash funds for the additional sign at the Winston uh, fire station, what happened there is when the DOT came in and they uh, were renovating or changing Highway 78, our rear entrance became our primary entrance. So we're having to put another sign out that way. So, <laughs> and that's, we don't normally buy two signs for one station, but this is something that just happened. So, and I yield back. Okay, any other questions or concerns from the Board of Commissioners? Yeah. Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, I'm sure. Previous question back to number 14, because I, I think this begets, a, this is important, and I, and I don't disagree, but it needs to be some clarity uh, regarding number 14. Uh, and I'm going to take a little liberty. Um, you know, the Capital Transportation Fund was an important action taken by the Board of Commissioners. It set us down the path of financial discipline. Uh, which Commissioner Mulcair gets all credit for. Uh, I mean, we, we approved it as a board, but it was his idea. And the, the brilliance behind that was just that. Decisions that were made by the Board of Commissioners were just random. They were just, whatever the moment, whoever had the political strength to get something done, got done. 
And it, it, it brought a certain type of, again, discipline to decision making. It says, okay, let's set aside. We, um, our um, director of home and always use rainy day fund, but let's just set something aside. And it got us down a path of maturity as it relates to decision making. It's not just linear. There's conditions. So we moved some money over here and it began with half a million dollars, but I'm sure we've shared this document plenty of times. We've set aside two million at one time, half a million at one time, and it was just one of those bucket moments at the end during the budget approval process where we sat up here as board of commissioners and said, okay, okay, Commissioner Mitchell wanted something for work, workers' comp. I mean, that was the whole point. It was just at our discretion. And so now you have, um, uh, you know, with, with that discipline came now, we could evolve. So we, we've grown. So from the introduction of that capital transfer fund, capital transportation fund, we have evolved to an actual policy that binds us. Up until that point, it was discretionary. And yes, we did turn it back because we could. Because like, okay, let's help Madam Chair get through this budget process. It was deliberate because you could. It wasn't bound and that's the growth that we're doing as a board as it relates to sort of how you can move, how you can maneuver. And so I didn't want that to fall away as if like, no, now that, that brings a good object lesson that if you want to keep us disciplined and put a policy in place, but in the absence of that, you can shift it. That's the whole point, having buckets of money around where, okay, well, we can move it over here because there was no conditions. So this is growth. And so again, I, I don't want that to fall away. That was an important capital transportation plan. It was so important for our growth. And I'm very proud of this policy that we're putting in place because now this does somewhat bind us. Now we would violate our policy. Now you can take us to task. But up until this point, it was our, it was because we could. It was discretion. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair. Comments, uh, Commissioner Malkier. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Robinson very graciously uh, mentioned me in, in remarks relating to the capital transportation fund. I appreciate that. Uh, it probably too much, but um, uh, too much praise. But uh, to that point, and to Commissioner Guider's point, uh, we did put uh, money in repeated years in increments, maybe a half a million or maybe a million or, or so forth, over quite a few years. The point was it, it, it was a habit. It, it was a good habit, but it was not policy. And that's what this, that's what this addresses. I yield back. Okay. Any other? No, no. Come in. Okay. Well stated. All right. Let's we Let's have a motion and a second. So please prepare to cast your votes for this uh, consent agenda, if you approve it. We are waiting on the votes to be cast. <clears throat> The vote is unanimous and um, the motion carries. Next, we have the approval of the minutes. Board of Commissioners, please look at your um, expenses for this past month. And um, with that being said, I know you've had an opportunity to look these expenses over. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Prepare to cast your votes. Are we waiting on the votes to compute? I will ask our uh, communications director to come forth and please read the announcements for us as, as soon as the votes are. Okay, yes. <coughs> communications director, we, if you would just pick up where it says Keep Douglas Beautiful, Commissioner uh, Mulcair is going to tell about his wonderful event. Good evening, uh, Chairman and Board of Commissioners. Hold on just one second. We're waiting on our oh, I'm sorry. votes to compute. And uh, Commissioner uh, Mulcair is going to talk about his uh, first. Okay. Just want to make sure. 
Understood. Please bear with us. We are uh, engaging and excited about our new technology. <laughs> okay, we should have the votes momentarily. We have a unanimous, unanimous vote again. The motion carries. Next, we have announcements, and we'll start off with Commissioner Mulk here. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I think a lot of the community is excited. We're getting ready to experience our third annual spay and neuter fundraiser and party, and it's being hosted by the Douglas County Animal Services as well as the Douglas County Humane Society. And uh, Peggy, my wife, and I will be kind of assisting in, in the hosting responsibilities. Uh, the party will be on April 21st from 6 to 10 p.m. at the gym at Deer Lick Park, 2105 Mac Road. It's going to be a great evening with some uh, with uh, wonderful food and entertainment, and it's for a great cause. Uh, the fact is, at the end of this year, money's raised over the last uh, two fundraisers. Uh, will have spayed and neutered over 550 animals in Douglas County. And just multiply that out of, uh, of wanted, unwanted litters of, of kittens and puppies. A huge impact. Um, the, uh, the cost is, is uh, $40 per person. I would like you to contact Connie uh, McKinnon at 404-625-0821. And you can also go to the Douglas County Humane Society and find additional information about the spay and neuter fundraiser. And let me re repeat that date, April 21st from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Deer Lick Park Gym, 2105 Mack Road. And that phone number, talk to Connie at 404-625-0821. And I'm looking forward to seeing the commissioners there. We will be there. Thank you. Communications Director, please tell us our next uh, announcement, if you could read it for us. Sure. Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Uh, the uh, initiative Keep Douglas County Beautiful will have a Keep America Beautiful affiliation ceremony uh, on April 30th of this year at 1 o'clock here in Citizens Hall at the courthouse. The public is invited and welcome to attend. Thank you. At this time, do we have any any other announcements from our Board of Commissioners? Vice Chairman Robinson? Yes, ma'am. I got two combined. One, one is an announcement, and, and the other one is just sort of a, a point of order. Um, yesterday, um, um, during the work session, um, there was an acknowledgment um, that we're going to go into Finance Committee to deal with um, um, a, a topic dealing with um, Greta. And we also brought it up in our Transportation Committee today. And so I just want to make an announcement of what the findings were out of that, and I'm asking our director of Hallman to come forth and just present what came out of that, the conclusion of the matter, and we'll take it up later at a more formal matter and a time in the future. Absolutely. Um, the Greta Fund uh, has a deficit and um, of about $1.4 million. Um, we are in the middle of our audit, and we have new auditors. and. Um, while we knew that there, we were waiting for some reimbursements to come, um, there were um, some costs that were associated that were non-reimbursable. Um, I had my staff, Michelle Green, uh, financial analyst, look at um, the, the cost, work with uh, Director Valentin to uh, determine what would be reimbursable and what would not. Um, and we have found that around 1.4 million would not be reimbursable and therefore, um, our auditors will make an adjustment to our financial statements for 2017 uh, to affect our unassigned fund balance by that amount. Okay, let, let me let me back this up just for a, a hot second. Um, this is, please confirm that this is associated with the Lee Road. Yes, I'm sorry, it is Lee Road. All right. So, and this is for not only just the the. the the citizens of District 2 who have been like, where we stand on this, but for the broader citizens who are looking at uh, accounting following the money. And this is a topic that came up in our last, um, last fall's retreat that we realized that the Lee Road, um, the grant that was associated with that from the state may have expired. And obviously there was great like, what now? And as we went down this path, uh, we realized, okay, when did it expire? And then why are we still buying right away and condemning properties 
if we know the grant is not there, why are we spending our match? All right, now we, we sort of looked into this. We've got a new director of transportation who looked into this matter, tried to reconcile with our finance department to find this hole. Where'd the money go? They always say, where's the money? All right, we tried to get the best I can, but now our formal auditors have grabbed it. It's out of our hands. All right, so I thought it was important to bring this forward just as a, commi uh, a commission out of respect, just to say we could have waited until the end and let them come out on the other side, but it's one of those where there's action that needs to be taken regarding on this. Um, so I'm gonna, I gave that as background because I thought that was important. Go ahead and continue. Um, that's that? pretty much it regarding the Greta, um, <laughs> <laughs> unless you wanted me to give any more. Um, and then just a brief overview on the healthcare fund, three-year plan. Again, this was something that um, will be, um, bring in before in a new, another meeting to bring you the th what we're suggesting as a finance committee as a three-year plan to take care of the deficit we have in that fund. Uh, our auditors uh, met with me and uh, suggested they understand the improvements we've made. Um, we've you know got MSI, our benefit consultants on board. Uh, 2017 was the first year um, in the past three or four years that we actually uh, did not lose any money in the self-health care fund. Uh, just to kind of give you a brief overview, both the, we're self-insured for both health care and workers' comp. Those are what we call proprietary internal service funds. They're not to make money nor lose money. They pretty much are to break even. Uh, our workers' comp, uh, y'all were gracious enough uh, in years past to put additional money in there. We're now out of the red in the workers' comp and have around 800000 to a $1 million in that fund. Um, but we're just going to be bringing before y'all a three-year plan as suggested by the auditors uh, so that they can see that, one, we recognize it. I, do, I did let them know we're aware of it. We talk about it at budget retreat. But this plan just allows us to face it and deal with it and come up with a plan to get rid of it in three years. I thank you for the update, and that's all I wanted to do. I, um, because of the auditors brought this forward as opposed to waiting to our mid-year retreat. That being said, I'm going to move on. Um, my announcement is that um, I, I did have a um, attend. I did have a public uh, public appearance at the Villas of West Ridge on Lee Road last week. Lightly attended, but very rich um, insight and, and comments back from um, <coughs> our residents. We had um, uh, residents that were everywhere, from a civil rights attorney to um, just somebody who was a public manager, um, who weighed in on different aspects of things that were relevant for um, District 2. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm supposed to be at a, um, a pub. I was invited to speak at the tributary tonight. Uh, and doesn't look like I'm going to make it. And, um, but I, I, that was the intent. And my next um, public engagement meeting will be next week at Parkside up on Thornton Road. So I'm continuing with the community engagement. Um, again, this is part of what I normally do. I just make myself available. Um, I, I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay. Any other questions or comments or uh, additions from the Board of Commissioners at this time? Thank you for participating in local government and with this agenda being satisfied, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>